Even mom watches this show. So stop everything that you are doing and look right into the camera. Celebrate all that is Cardin Athletics and watch this award-winning show with us. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. And uh, a quick addition, and uh, we're, we're almost back to Monday night. Yeah, well, it is the first regular season edition of Sports Night for the fall of 2014. It's first day of school. We had a soccer doubleheader we this did. evening. And we're here on the set late to bring you all the latest in Cardinal sports. And then, as you mentioned, we will back to be back to regularly scheduled Monday nights live at 730 uh, starting next week. But as you mentioned, also, we're going to try and do this in 15 minutes. So we're going to fly through what we have starting with the football team. They'll have to try to build off of what positives they can take from a lopsided lost Elk River in the season opener. Among those positives, the line performed well and the offense was able to move the ball. Unfortunately, they were unable to finish on six trips into the red zone and the defense gave up way too many big plays on the brighter side. That's the past and there's a lot of season in front of them. Cardinals open the game with the ball and march to the Elk River 10, but Ty Keese can't control the handoff. Elks jump on the fumble for the first turnover of the game. Two plays later, the Elks' impressive running game chalks up the first points of the game. Zach Ernst races 63 yards to the end zone, puts Elk River on the board. First of many big plays for the Elks on offense. Cardinals drive to scoring territory again late. The first Honda is looking for Jordan Little. Gets a little too much air under it. Alec Hills gets the interception in the end zone. Takes the Elks five plays this time, but again, the running game proves unstoppable. This time it's fullback Peter Jones breaking through and scoring on a 28-yard run. Elk River up 14-0 after one. After the Cardinals go three and out, Elks take it on the run again. Too many weapons coming out of the backfield to keep track of the ball. This time it's quarterback Trent Pink on the keeper around the right end. Shows the speed and footwork as he goes 48 yards for the score. Coomer Rapids with another chance to score in the second. Onda trying to force this one into Ty Keys, who's double covered in the corner. Kyle Zimmer able to make the pick before going out of bounds. It's another turnover in the red zone. Two plays later, it's Ernst off to the races again. This time it's a 75 yard score to make it 28 nothing at the half. Cardinals have three turnovers in the red zone. Turn it over three more times on downs. They give up five plays of over 50 yards, another for 48, 640 yards of rushing and nearly 700 yards of total offense for Elk River in the 47 and nothing loss. You know, it's a tough one to watch, quite obviously. You know, we're, we're big, big homers. A little bit, We've yeah. never been accused of that before. But there are a few positives you take away. You talked about the trips to the red zone. You talked about, you know, some additional plays in that game. They need to avoid the turnovers. They have to convert in the red zone. It's a good coaching staff. They'll turn it around. Well, and, and give Elk River a lot of credit. One of the best uh, running attacks that uh, I've seen in, in all the years we've done this here at CTN. Most of the game, none of us, the cameras, the announcers, and certainly the defense knew who had the ball True. for Elk River. True. Unusual setup. I mean, three running backs. Either quarterback was excellent and Trent Pink, and, and the Cardinals switched to a 4-4-3 defense just to face this they'll make the adjustments. Well, they host Jefferson on Friday. They're at Anoka next Friday. Well, the tennis team opened last week's action looking to bounce back from the first conference loss of the season. The Cardinals had a great chance to keep themselves near the top of the conference standings with two matches against lower ranked opponents. They did not let that opportunity get past them. Junior captain Allie Bauer continues to fill the top single spot for Coon Rapids. She is proving match after match that she deserves to be there. Facing off against Spring Lake Park's Mallory Corgan on Tuesday, Bauer shows her patience, composure, and her skills for both the baseline and the net. Bauer fell behind early in the first set, but didn't let that get her down. She takes control midway through the first and wins in straight sets, 6-3, 6-3. The great winner on the two-handed backhand right here. A nice, nice job. Cardinals lineup continues to change. Carly Ruestra teams up with Helen Nelson at the first doubles for the match with the Panthers. And Westra takes care of this point and, and at the net all by herself. Westra and Nelson, they'd have to battle back in this one as well. After dropping the first set 4-6, they would come back to even the match with a 6-4 win in the second. The Cardinals will get a win in the super tie break, beating Kelly, uh, Kelly and Jones 10-7 of Spring Lake Park. Coon Rapids would sweep the Panthers with a perfect 7-0 victory.
a nice match for the Cardinals. Nice win for them, and they follow it up with a 6-1 win over Anoka on Thursday. Ali Bauer, 6-2-6-0. Heidi Hanula, 6-love, six 6-love six at second singles. Nelson moved to the singles lineup and won 6-4, 6-3 at third. Wester and Ream at, sec at first doubles, 1-6, 3-6-2. McManus and Nagley at second doubles were winners in straight sets as well. On Tuesday, earlier today, the Cardinals beat Centennial 5-2. The losses coming at first singles and first doubles. But Heidi Hanula again looking very strong at second singles, win 6-0, 6-1. Nagley wins 6-1, 6-0 at third singles. A super tie break win for Georgie at third or at fourth singles. McManus and Ream win at second doubles. And Mortensen and McDonald win in a 14-12 super tie Long break. One in third doubles that pushes the Cardinals record to six and three on the season. Nice start for the season for them. A really nice as you talked about three wins in a row and they're, they're on a little bit of a roll here. Well and they've got a tough one coming up. They host Elk River on Thursday. The Elks always a very dangerous team here in the Northwest Suburban. They travel to Alexandria for a tournament on Saturday. Volleyball team got its season started last Wednesday with a 3-0 loss at the hands of Heritage Christian Academy. They lose 17-25, 16-25, 25-27. Jessica Hag led the team in kills and digs with eight each. She also added a block and an ace. Gonzala had six kills, seven digs. Gang had six digs, one kill, one eight. Ace Boyum also had eight digs for the Cardinals. Earlier this evening, they lost to Armstrong 3-0. Those scores were 20-25, 13-25, and 22-25. We did have a camera there. We'll have all of those highlights and those results for you next week on Sports Night. And again, moving to our regularly scheduled time on Monday night. The volleyball team will host Blaine on Thursday. That's uh, where we, we got Coach Scott Arcan from, yep. so a pr program he's very familiar with. Then the Cardinals will host the Keller Classic on Saturday. Swimming and diving team gets the dual meet season underway. We talked about during the preview show they had competed in the Northwest Suburban Relays, but that's not a really a scored event. A lot of odd events that uh, they don't see during the season. So the first real look at competition at Elk River on Thursday, they host Maple Grove a week from Thursday. Boys cross country also getting its season started this week. They are at the Monticello invite on Thursday and the Hutchinson Invitational a week from Thursday on the 11th. Girls cross country team got their third event in already. They finished sixth place out of 26 teams of the St. Olaf High School Showcase on Friday. And again, very tight, big numbers. They got 37 seconds from first Cardinal finisher to the seventh Cardinal finisher. Brenda Del Castello led the way with the 30th place finish. Elise Weimholt was in 44th, Benson 52nd, Porter in 55th. And then look at Davis and Oni Akaba, just a half a second between them in 65th and 66th place. Girls cross country team also at the Monticello invite on Thursday. They are in Hutchinson for an invitational next Tuesday. Boys soccer team after losing the season opener to Creighton Durham Hall 2 to 1. They lose one tough to Centennial last Tuesday 5 to 1 and they're blanked by Spring Lake Park 2 0 on Thursday dropping them to 0 and 3. Cardinals hoping home cooking would be the answer to their struggles early in the season. Their uh, home opener earlier this evening against Armstrong. Falcons were coming off a 5-2 victory over Duluth Marshall and boasting a 2-1-1 record, including a win over defending conference champion Blaine. It was clearly going to be difficult. The Cardinals would need to find some more offense in order to be successful. Falcons flew into the complex with plenty of offense and plenty of confidence. Scored four in the first half, then added it added to with three more early in the second. Steven Edgeman led the way with three for Armstrong. The Cardinals were able to avoid the shutout when Gail Tomboy got behind the defense, slipped that shot past the keeper midway through the second half. Falcons, however, would add two more late in the game. They turned this one into a route. 9-1 the final, and that drops the Cardinals to 0-4 to start the season. Got to be impressed with the Armstrong boys team. They played really well, did a great job of controlling that match from start to finish. They did, and they, they came up with a number of creative yep. plays that sprung guys behind the defense. Uh, nine goals, and I would 
not for sure, but five or six of them uh, came on on breakaway goals. Absolutely. They they were getting their guys back they, there. And, they were impressive. And to their credit, they were finishing. Coomer Rapids had some good opportunities early in that game before there was any score. They seemed to be the team generating more At first. good scoring chances. But uh, in that, really throughout the first half, I thought the scoring chances were almost equal. But the uh, difference was the Falcons were finishing and the Cardinals uh, were coming up empty. That's the key. Cardinals will host Elk River on Thursday. They're at Anoka on Saturday. Girls soccer team struggling mightily on offense. Three games in the books before this week started and not a single goal in the net for the Cardinals. They lost the opener 4-0 to Park. They lose the conference opener to the Centennial Cougars 6-0. And they lose to Spring Lake Park last Thursday 3-0. 0-3 on the year, 0-2 in the conference. We did that second half of the doubleheader the girls played. And having lost their first three games all by shutout, it was clear the Cardinals needed what they when they took the field against Armstrong. For the Falcons, offense has not been a problem. After a 6-2 win over Andover, Armstrong was still boasting undefeated record early in the season, and they were guaranteed to test the winless Cardinals. Armstrong had possession of the ball for much of the first half, but the Cardinals make the most of their first opportunity. Caitlin Ackerman beats the keeper to get Coon Rapids its first goal of the season and put them up 1-0 in the 24th minute. Armstrong is able to answer with a little less than seven minutes to go in the first. Anna Wilcox takes the free kick directly in the upper corner, just over Fraser's fingers to even the score at one. About a minute later, Cardinals pressure turns into a PK opportunity. Captain Emily Koss will handle it, but her shot sales wise, you saw scoring chances. They are few and far between for the rest of Coon Rapids the, the way, but unfortunately, defense and the keeper had strong play for you know for the uh, the Cardinals. They did. They, they did. They had. They really had to hold on and. And again, credit to uh, the Armstrong team for generating a lot of offense, a lot of good scoring chances late in the game. But uh, Frazier came up with some big saves, 13 saves in the contest. And, uh, and Cardinals hold on for a tie. And that's got to be a success when considered a success when you've lost the first three by shutout. Well, we talked to Coach DeJoy after the match, and he felt that. He felt that, you know, they played a little bit better tonight. Certainly would have liked to get the win. Certainly would have liked that PK uh, shot to count, but he'll take that tie and he'll continue to move forward. They too will play Elk River on Tuesday and travel to they travel to take on Andover next Tuesday. And Howie will be there. Another soccer doubleheader on the calendar coming up next Tuesday. But first, we'll have live coverage of the Coon Rapids football game as they host the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars on Friday night. Then that's live soccer doubleheader at Andover. Games at 5 and 7 next Tuesday. And then Cardinal football team on the road for the first time at Anoka on Friday the 12th. And Howie will all be at every event. That's every right. event that you see there in front of you. We are in full swing with the Ooh. full season for 2014, but that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us to continue to support everything we do here at CTM for the entire crew, including the master of mustache machismo, Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight. <laughs>